five months after the doctors kind of started mm, letting us know that there might be something different, right? Something that we have to think about, um, that she might be born with a disability, or they didn't know what really at first. They knew it was Down syndrome. Did they know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, but they, they really wouldn't tell us, you know, they're, they're, I think they're bound by a code of ethics not to say one way or the other, it's 100%, but they let you know and then they, they put things on the table like, you know, do you want, you can, it's seemingly safe for you to have the baby, but you have the option at a certain point to not, you know, continue the pregnancy, that kind of choices. So, uh, talk together and think about, you know, decide what we want to do. And of course, both of us decided we wanted to have the child because our logic is that, you know, they, they couldn't tell us too much. You know, you don't really know what the level of her disability is going to be or anything like that. But um, we knew she's a human being. She has a soul like the rest of humanity and they have a lot to give in, in the world. So we made that decision early on that we weren't going to go through with that. And you face pressure from other people who have not thought about the issue, right? Who don't know people with disabilities that will tell you kind of straight in your face, oh, you should abort the child, right? <laughs> like, like quite shocking, you know, from different sources, you hear that kind of thing directly. That was the whole thing, as, as difficult as it is emotionally and psychologically to process, because it's really like someone pulling the rug from under you, like nothing in your life. It's like, the only thing I can compare it to is someone you love getting hit and killed by a car. It's that dramatic. The, the change, the shock to your, your mental uh, state is so severe that you, you're really in a state of shock. You don't know how to process it and it takes a long time. Like, First stage is denial, right? Oh no, there's got to be a way to cure this or, or whatever, right? So you search for solutions, and then until you come to the realization that no, this is just how you know people are born with different challenges, including us, right? We're born with different challenges as well, it's just not physically obvious. So uh, yeah, that that whole experience was life changing, just that whole period, and then of course the child making it through the you know, birth and then you getting to know them and it's, it's, it was, and the, of course the whole, all the other people, you start to meet all the other uh, people in the world around you that uh, have disabilities and or are born with different challenges. And that in itself is just really, really enlightening. You start to see the value of a person. That is a profound life-changing experience for, for us or for me me especially, it changed my entire perspective of, of what it means to be a person in the world. In fact, I, I always said Zena saved our marriage because I he, she was such, a, not, not her, but the idea of having a child who has special needs is so foreign to my vision of how my life would be that it's it's a severe shock to the system. And I have to say, it's, it's very challenging. And the fact that we worked through it, we decided to have her, we decided that she is going to be part of our life. I think that severe shock and test to our marriage and my personal existence saved my life. It changed my life goals because um, nobody expects to, to for, for your life to, you know, to have these massive challenges and that is a difficult one. And uh, one of the difficulties is knowing that her lifespan is not going to be that long, right? And people telling you, okay, she might not be able to speak she might not be able to ever walk. She might, you know, kind of... And her lifespan, her expected lifespan is going to be maximum 60 years old. That was very difficult. And 
the kind of work she can do, and、uh, if she'll be able to read or write, count. Those are what people expect their children to be able to do when they grow up, and to be serving society, to have a life, to have build a career. So those are are the things that are the limits. And most of the time,、uh, they put limits on people with Down syndrome or any form of disability. She is a real gift for us. We're Baha'is, and Baha'u'llah says the soul comes into existence at the moment of conception, and that's it. If I, if I did abort the baby, or if we aborted the baby, we would have killed a soul. Or at least not, yeah. Maybe, maybe made a decision that prevents that entity, that soul, to come into this world and face the challenges that we all have to face and learn things and contribute, right? So, that conception of a soul is something that we talked about, right? And there's a writing about that: the the light shines through a lamp, right? But sometimes, you know, the lamp is not itself. The body is not so perfect, right? It has Flaws or, or misshapen or whatever it is, right? So, but the light is still there. Okay, that's an interesting question because I just had some aunties just today. We went to the fun fair downstairs, you know, and she was playing the games and all that. And she actually,、uh, there was a line behind us, and there were some aunties waiting for for her to finish the game. And she won the game. She it was a claw machine. She managed to claw the soft plushie up. But then on the way to the release, it dropped, and she didn't win the game, so to speak. But the aunties behind us, they're like, "Give her the thing. <laughs> she 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 did it. Give it to her." <laughs> I'm like、oh, okay, and the guy was like、oh, unwilling to give it to her, and then the auntie said, "Give her that." <laughs> and she's like, "Oh, thank you." <laughs> so I mean, I, I, it's interesting because you expect the worst from people, but actually, I only see the best in people. If people were mean to her, for for some reason, God has protected me. With not being able to see them because I only see people being nice to my kid, so that's amazing. I think,、mm. and that's made me like very hopeful for humanity because I really see a lot of good in people, especially when they encounter Zena. Yeah, I think actually things have changed in Singapore since Zena was born, even in that short time period, like thirteen years. Because I remember、uh, when she was about three or four, taking her out, and there would be a lot more staring, and you could tell they were trying to figure out, you know, what's different about her, right?、Uh, but now, definitely, you know, a lot more of that kind of reaction. Like people are starting to accept, I think, in Singapore, more inclusive attitude. You know, people who have differences is definitely noticeable to me from when she was a toddler to now. There's a lot more. Visibility, maybe. I think the government and the institutions, the、uh, NGOs that are working, are all doing a really good job to put them in the public eye. And also, actually, the there are people that come up to me and ask you how you know this is. They've got all sorts of misconceptions around people with special needs or you know people who have Down syndrome. And I used to get really angry. Because I'm like, no, that's not true. They can talk, they can think, they have a soul, yeah. <laughs> But now I'm just like, actually, it's okay to not know and to ask because I didn't know before I had Zena. I was one of you. I was one of them. One of the ignorant people who doesn't know. Do they have a soul? Are they stupid? I mean, I was one of those. So now I actually I'm. Very patient with them, and I thought we like, yeah. Well, actually, that's a misconception. You know, it happens to all all populations. You know, this is an irregularity. Yes, they have special needs, but other human beings have other special needs too that we don't often talk about, and could be more severe. You know, like mental illness. We are all special individuals. So I managed to kind of. Actually, be more patient and compassionate to people who are 
being rude or ignorant. I wasn't worried about that kind of thing for some reason. Maybe because we hadn't really made the decision and I've never been one to worry so much about other people's opinions. <laughs> and I, I was very focused on Zaina herself, right? Like trying to enjoy being with her and helping her in whatever way we can. They bring joy to the community around them. You know, like every day, they, there's somebody in their life, at some point, they make happy very often, right? And that's not something everyone can say, you know? Can all of us say you did that today? You traveled through the world and you, you made a few people smile or feel better? I, uh, that's not so common among uh, normal people, mm. right? But among Down syndrome people, that is very common. <laughs> like that's kind of their job in the world. They go around doing that, making uh, a lot of people feel that kind of happiness you know, very um, frequently.